Hey, come on in everybody. I'm Slushy. Thank you for clicking on this video. Today I just want to do a quick video going over the Godot Engine's auto tiling feature. It's a bit of a complicated feature um, when you're not used to it at first. And there are a lot of things involved when setting up auto tiles in Godot. Uh, so we're just going to get right into it. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial. First of all, please make sure that you download the file I linked in the description below. This includes the whole project that we're going to import into Godot and start working with. I'm just going to get over to my computer and get started. Uh, follow along and by the end of this tutorial you should have a fully working auto tile tile map that you can use in your games. Okay, so on my desktop I've got the folder uh, of that was inside the zip file that you can download from the description of this video. Uh, when you unzip that zip file you'll get a folder uh, called slushy auto tile example and you can just extract that wherever you want to. Um, here I have it on my desktop. Uh, so now I'm going to open Godot the project list opens up and I'm just going to import this new project. So I'm going to go to my desktop, slushy auto tile example, and select project.godot, then click open. Uh, you'll see there's a green check mark indicating everything's ready, and we'll just click import and edit to start editing this project. So here's the project, and um, the first thing we want to do is we want to add a tile map node to our scene. So we're going to right click on node 2D, uh, add child node. And I'm going to type in tile map. So you can see here it is right here in the list. I'm going to select it and choose create to create a new tile map. So I've got my tile map selected and you see over here in the inspector area, things started appearing. Uh, these are different properties of the tile map. One of the properties of the tile map is a tile set. And so this, there's no tile set for this tile map right now. So we're going to go ahead and create one by clicking on the word empty here and then click on new tile set in this pop-up window. So now nothing really changed other than now instead of saying empty, it says tile set. This means there's a tile set attached to this tile map and now we can configure the tile set. So if we click on it, this brings us to this tile set editor panel down here. I'm gonna make this a bit bigger just so you can see it. There are three kinds of auto tile maps that Godot supports. It supports two by two, three by three minimal, and three by three. We'll get into the details of those here in a little bit. For now, we're gonna start with the two by two tile map. So what you need to do is down here at the plus, click it, and then choose two by two auto tiles uh, from the file system. These are the, the images that were included with the project. Click open, and you'll see right here is that little graphic. This is the tile map. The, the, the whole graphic is 32 by 32 pixels, so it's very small. So we're just gonna click on the plus a few times right here to zoom in on it nice and big so you can see it. I'm going to drag this up a bit more here just to get a nice big view in the window. Okay, so now with this selected and zoomed in nice and big so we can see it, we're going to go ahead and add a new auto tile. So make, first you got to make sure this is selected. It already is, but just if it's not, click on this, make sure it's selected, and then click new auto tile. Now nothing really happened other than we have this new area here with a region button that is now selected. Uh, so we have we need to define the region of this image we want to use for our tiles. Now we're going to use this entire image. We're not going to just use a small region, we're going to use the whole image. So with region selected like it already is, click the top left corner of the graphic and just drag a square across the entire thing to the bottom right until the entire graphic is selected. With our region selected, we now have a lot more options up here that we can work with. So next, what we want to do is we want to click bit mask. The bit mask is how we define how our auto tiles are going to work. Before we can actually draw our bit mask, we need to configure it a bit first. Expand the selected tile section and you'll get a long list of parameters for this tile. We're only concerned with a few of them. We wanna make sure our tile mode is set to auto tile. It can be single tile, auto tile, or atlas tile. We want auto tile. Our auto tile bit mask for this is gonna be two by two. It can be three by three minimal, three by three, or two by two. So we're gonna select two by two. And then the subtile size is eight. Inside this graphic are 16 different tiles. Each of them are eight by eight pixels in size. So over here at the subtile size, we need to change that to 8x and 8y. Now with that in place, we can start drawing our bit mask. Now for 
uh, the bit mask, we're going to be mostly just concerned with the areas that are that, that the player is not going to be able to walk on. This is a, kind of an easy guideline for figuring out how the bit mask is supposed to be. For this example, we can consider areas that the player are not supposed to walk on uh, part of the bit mask. So we're going to cover our image with the bit mask up accordingly like this. Now the way bit masks work is uh, depending on if it's two by two or three by three, the, uh, the tile map is going to take a look at the bit mask and then for each of the red squares inside of each sub tile, it is going to check the surrounding tiles in your tile map that you're drawing. And so now with our bit mask in place, we have one last adjustment we need to do to our tile map. We need to click back here on the tile map and then over on the right side in the inspector, we need to expand the cell region. Within the cell region, we need to change some of these numbers. Basically, we're changing 64 to 8 because our tiles are only 8 by 8 in size, not 64 by 64 in size. So we'll make these all 8s. Now with that in place, we should be able to start drawing our tile map. We need to zoom in a little bit because these tiles are small. But you can see here, this is the top left tile in our image, but once we start drawing, it's going to form the auto tile, tile map. Now you can see being a two by two uh, bit mask, we have a lot of shapes that are not supported, like that shape, just a single tile is not supported. Um, you can draw basically a single line of tiles is not going to work. Um, for a two by two bit mask, you need to have a bit more tiles uh, for it to work with. You need at least four tiles for any given auto tile to actually work. This can be fine for a lot of games. If you want to have a bit more control and have a bit more detail in your auto tiles, you're going to want to go with a 3x3 bit mask. And so for that, the steps are essentially the same as with a 2x2 bit mask, but we're going to be updating the bit mask itself. And we're going to be selecting a different tile image as well. So I'm actually going to name this tile map 2x2 tiles. And now I'm going to add another tile map. I'm just going to call this three by three tiles so we're not confused. And back in the cell section, we're going to make the same changes. Go eight, 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 eight. And then we're going to add a new tile set. We're going to open the tile set, go down here, add a new tile, and we're going to select the three by three minimal auto tiles file. Now there's a lot more tiles in this one because there's a lot more combinations that it can account for. Make sure you're zoomed in again so you can see the you can see the whole image and then click new auto tile like before. Select the region. We're going to select the entire tile set again. We want the whole image. So we're going to drag a rectangle around the entire thing. And then uh, we're going to click bit mask. And over here in the selected tile area, you might need to expand it again. Make sure auto tile is once again selected. Now make sure instead of selecting two by two, we want to do three by three minimal. And we also want to make sure our subtile size is set to eight by eight. Now with three by three minimal, instead of each subtile getting divided into four squares, it gets divided into nine squares. And the same basic rules apply as before. The nine squares in the bit mask are going to be compared to the actual tiles that are in place in the scene around it to determine what tile is going to appear there. So for example, this bit mask, th this one down here is the easiest of all. It's just a single tile. If it, when you're placing tiles, and you just place a single tile, it's going to use this one. This one will meet all the requirements. There's just the tile itself in the middle and no other tiles are around it. Therefore, it's going to use this single tile here. And the rest, the, the same rules are going to be applied for the rest of them.
All right, this is what the bit mask is supposed to look like for a three by three minimal tile set, at least the tile set that I have provided for you in this example. Once you've got the bit mask looking like this, you're ready to start drawing three by three auto tiles. So let's hide this tile map that we've already drawn here and then select our three by three tiles. And we're gonna select our only tile over here and just start drawing. So we just draw one just to see what it looks like. Right there, we only drew one. So that's the single tile that we noted earlier. It's just one tile, it's self-contained, it looks right. It looks, it's a, it looks correct. But if I draw two next to each other, it connects. And I can just keep drawing single tiles in any combination I can think of. The only thing that three by three minimal uh, tile sets do not account for are diagonals. That is a lot more tiles that need to be created, um, uh, 256 to be exact. That's a lot of work. If you need diagonals in your game, then that's really your only option. Um, otherwise, if you can do without diagonals, I would uh, recommend just skipping that. We now have working two by two tiles and three by three tiles. So the last thing that I wanna show you real quick, I'm not gonna go too in depth on it, um, because it's going to be kind of different depending on what your game is, what you're doing with it. Um, but we want to be able to add collisions to this tile map as well. Right now, if you were to add a character to the scene and have them walk around in your tile map, they would just walk right through the walls. Uh, that's probably not what anyone wants uh, in their games. And so uh, Godot's tile map lets you define uh, the collision area for each individual tile. So we can go back into our tile map. This time I'm just gonna go back into the two by two again. And I'm gonna click on the tile set and click on the tile here and click this little arrow to go into the edit mode. And I'm gonna click on collision. So here for each individual tile, you can specify the collision area that you want to have. Uh, that basically you're going to be specifying the areas that you don't want the, the player's characters or any characters to be able to pass through. Um, and to do that, you, they give you a square or a rectangle uh, tool and a polygon tool if you have, you know, oddly shaped tiles or collision areas. For this one, we actually are going to use both. Um, we do have square collision areas, but also some non-square collision areas. So. This tile map is kind of an isometric looking tile map. You don't want the player to you know, run through the roof, obviously, but you still want the player to be able to walk up on top of this wall here without actually getting blocked by it because of the perspective. And so we're going to use the polygon tool and I'm just gonna show you a few of these tiles here, uh, how to use this. So I'm gonna click on this right here and it might help if I can zoom in a bit more. And I'm going to define the area of this of this tile that I want uh, collisions to not go through. I'm also going to enable snapping so we get straight lines when we when we draw our collision shapes here. And then over here on the inspector, I need to change the snap options. So instead of steps being 32 by 32, I'm going to make them two by two just so there's some good snapping. This will allow us to get more accurate collision areas while retaining straight lines. So I'm gonna click the polygon tool and I'm gonna click on the top left of this tile here. I'm gonna click again on the top right to draw a line. Now I'm gonna go down to the bottom right. And now I'm gonna stop right here at the edge because this is where the collision is going to happen. We still want the player to walk on the floor over here so I'm not gonna draw a line over here. I'm gonna draw a line around the edge. And also we want the player to be able to kind of walk up against this wall. So I'm gonna draw my I'm gonna draw my line up here right at the top of that wall there. And then I'm gonna bring that all the way over to the side and then complete the shape. So now this area here uh, cannot be traversed by any characters, anyone that has a collision object on them. They're gonna get stopped by this area. So they can still walk up to here, but then get stopped right there. Um, additionally, you can use the square tool. Some areas work fine with just a square. So we can go to this area, oops. So we can, so we can go to this area down here, click the square tool and click the top left corner and it will automatically draw a complete square around it for us because this tile is uh, completely blocked off. We don't want the player ever to go across this tile. 
and we can follow the same kind of procedure for all the rest of the tiles. So I'll click this one here. All right, so now we've got collisions set up as well. This is how you would set up collisions on your tile map, so that way your characters can now run into walls, run into you know run into your tiles and, and get stopped without going through them as if they weren't even there. And that's it, that's the tutorial. We just went through and learned how to create auto tiles using Godot's tile map, both two by two and three by three minimal tile sets. There's a link below in the description you can use to download the project file that I used for this tutorial and you will be able to accomplish everything I did in this video. So that's it, that's all I wanted to go over. I hope you have a better understanding of auto tiles in Godot after this. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in, well, the comment section below. I'll try and answer any questions I can. Please click like on this video as well and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to click that notification bell so you're notified when I make more videos like this one. Thanks everybody, I'll see you next time.